Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week, our last favorite time of the week until the end of 2022 because we're taking a look at the coolest knives that have just hit our shelves just in time for the new year. Let's check them out. All right, I've actually got three new exclusives to talk about this week. Uh, technically, two of them are new new. One of them's newly back in stock. Uh, but the first one is the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31 in this Knife Center exclusive configuration. These have been in the works for a good bit now and I'm finally happy to say they have arrived. And what you have here is an inlaid version of the Sabenza and our, our attempt was to kind of cross the gap or bridge the gap between the classier inlaid models and the more blue collar inlaid models, which is to say, you know, the fancier wood versions and the more kind of rough and tumble uh, micarta handled versions. We do have a micarta inlay front and back, technically a G-carta inlay, because this is a special run of material made for us for this uh, project with Chris Reeve by GL Hansen and Son. It is the olive color that they use, but a unique kind of stacking pattern, I believe is uh, how they refer to it. You can see it's got a little bit of variation uh, compared to a, a standard micarta. That's kind of what they like to do, give things a little bit of an extra spin. And due to that and due to the way these are cross cut, you get some really cool and unique patterning on each one. It has a little bit of that natural wood type of look while also having the good tactile properties of micarta. Feels a little bit more tacky when wet, so it enhances the grip like that. But apart from that, it just has a nice kind of silky feel when it is dry as well. Other thing we did to kind of, kind of bridge the gap, obviously you can see the gold hardware, also a double lug on the blade, which is not a, uh, a common occurrence on the Sabenzas out there. And the handle sports the glass blasted finish, which sits again in between the two regular styles. A lot of the wood handled versions typically will come with a satin finished front, whereas the micarta ones will come with the heavier bead blasted coating. The glass blast is finer than the bead blast. It also resists scratches a little more and it looks a little more clean, shall we say. Really awesome the way these turned out. 3.6 inch blade, S45 VN steel, classic Sabenza drop point shape, hollow grind, stonewashed finish on the blade and a very sharp edge as well. The lockup is superb. They don't call it a bank vault lockup for no reason. In fact, there is plenty of good reason for it. Feels great, looks great. Price on it comes uh, a bit pricier than I thought they were going to, I will be honest, but they, uh, they're right around the price of the standard wood inlaid models. I guess the, uh, the extra work on the inlays here and the double lug and the anodization bumped the price up a little bit. Uh, as such, about $7.55 for these exclusives. They are moving fairly quickly, I will say. Uh, we're filming you know, earlier in the week, obviously, than when these videos post. Uh, so we may or may not have any left by the time Thursday rolls around when this video does go up but I just had to show it, man. It turned out absolutely phenomenal. And it's a Sabenza. There you go. How often do we see those? Not often enough, I gotta because say. Because you buy them so quickly. Because you buy them so quickly. Next up, the RMJ Tactical Combat Africa is back in stock. Both some standard variations and this Knife Center exclusive version in black and orange G10. These are also kind of moving fairly quickly uh, at this point. Uh, I almost said a, a fairly quick clip, which is funny because, yeah. Kind of straight clip point blade. Actually, this, yeah, yeah, that's, for a second I thought there might be a hint of, of droppage to the uh, front uh, end of the spine there, but it is a straight clip point. Seven inch blade, 80 CRV2, really strong carbon steel, hollow ground to keep the uh, edge or the thickness behind the edge itself a little bit thinner. Helps it slice a little bit better, but you've still got nice robust spine all the way back, full tang design, of course. ADCRV V2, nice, tough stuff. Really suits this style of knife. I really like the uh, nice deep fullers on that blade too, kind of help balance things out a little bit. Very, very nice. And if you're not a huge fan of RMG's, RMG? 
RMJ's uh, milling lines, which they typically leave you know pretty raw, so to speak, these are, you can see here, it's a little wavier, a little finer than some of those uh, other versions you've seen out there. Feels very nice. The whole handle itself feels very nice too. Plenty of length, you know, even if I were wearing gloves, I do have slightly larger than average hands, I would still have enough room on that handle right there. Absolutely fantastic. The sheath is Kydex, here it is. And what's interesting to me, despite it being, you know, a fairly large knife, it is actually set up for horizontal carry on the belt with these two snaps here, with the pull the dot snap, which means of course, it's only going to disengage when pulled the right way, not likely to get snagged and pulled open from the side. And then you've got an extra retention strap here as well. So that's a lot of knife to kind of, hang on, there we go. That's a lot of knife to carry horizontally on the belt like that. I know some folks out there are gonna be very happy about that, but if that is not your thing, a standard uh, tech lock style clip will fit the whole pattern on this very easily so you can carry it uh, more traditionally on your belt. You can carry it inverted, of course, on some other gear. Lots of different options with that attachment and you'll have no problem fitting it to this sheath. Next up, our latest smooth G10 Crewwear Spyderco exclusive, exclusive has dropped. This is the Paramilitary 2. The price is about 175. I didn't mention the price on that RMJ, did I? I don't remember. About 395, uh, so just under 400 bucks for that American made yeah. RMJ tactical knife. But shall we return to the Spyderco? You must. It is the Paramilitary 2. It is also made in the USA. It's 175. Got a three and a half inch blade, crew wear steel here. So for a knife like this that might see some rougher use, you've got a little bit of extra toughness versus most of the other steels typically offered on this design. And yet you still have, with its full flat grind, a relatively slicey, actually quite slicey blade profile. Just a great all around versatile pattern, really. The handles are G10 with a smooth texture as opposed to, actually we don't have another G10 handle on here. Actually, yes we do with more of a typical weave texture. You can see on this O knife we're gonna look at near the end, has a different sort of feel to it in general. The uh, smooth is nice. It's a little kinder to one's pockets underneath that pocket clip, less likely to kind of wear away or won't wear things away as quickly. And yet still has plenty of grip with this handle shape. It just feels kind of silky in a different way than the Micarta we were talking about earlier, but it just feels pretty nice. Now all the everything on this particular knife has been blacked out, except of course for you know the logo and the blade markings. But all the hardware, the compression lock, the screws, the pocket clip, the standoffs on the back or the, uh, the tube on the back, everything is, has been blackened to minimize reflections and just kind of keep the uh, menacing vibe going on. Cool thing about the PM2, of course, is it is a larger knife, a medium to larger size knife, yet it can handle a lot like a smaller knife. You've got the kind of reach and girth you need for bigger tasks, but with the weight of it, which is not extreme, so let's see if I have a number here, 3.9 ounces, not too bad for, for this size of knife, really. Not an ultra light thing, but it's balanced so well, and the handle's shaped so well, and the choil, that allows you to choke your uh, finger up right behind the edge, all combined to something that can handle very nimbly, which is a harder trick to pull off than you might think on a bigger knife. But we've got a four position pocket clip on this knife, which means you can carry it no matter what your preferences are, and the compression lock at the back, which means you've got finger safe and fidget flicking action going on all at the same time, and of course a high degree of strength. That is a very strong lock to boot. What more could you ask for? All right, few more Spydercos to talk about today. The first is a sprint run of the Siren model. 24150 for this knife at this point in time. Uh, and the upgrades you see, well, the first one that's easily seeable, the handles are no longer G10. This is a peel ply carbon fiber, which means you can kind of see the weave there from the top, a little more so than the front. And there on the front, get some cool texture to go with it. Actually, even a little bit more, eh, kind of similar to a standard G10 texture, actually. I could have used this almost as an example uh, against the uh, PM2 there for a second. But a little bit more aggressive, but it's not sharp. This one has a 
really nice view. I, I'm, I don't have the word to describe it. Maybe I'll come up with something later. If I do, it'll be in this corner. If not, Thomas will, you know. I'll make up a word. Embarrass me. Um, compliant, maybe? I don't know. It's a really, it's got a smoothness to it, but obviously it's not smooth. It, 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 it's, it's textured without any hint of being jagged. I don't know. Nice. And that's all I'll say. It's nice. Very descriptive, I know. The original knife, uh, of course, uh, the uh, this iron is a uh, was kind of a, a water sports and, and uh, water activity focused design from its original designer. In fact, the finger guard here at the front, which is quite prominent, is that actually uh, intended to evoke a wave peaking. And that knife had LC two hundred N steel, which is of course extremely stainless. I think I actually am a big fan of that steel, but if you're looking for extreme edge retention. That's not quite what LC200N is good at. I think it has respectable edge retention, but the S90V on this sprint run is gonna be what you want if you want the longer or longest lasting edge you can get on this blade at this point in time. Really, really good edge retention, and it's really cool to see because despite the kind of you know water intended uh, origins of the knife, it's just a great knife. It's a great pattern for just general purpose usage. The blade itself is how long? About three and a half, just over. It's a simple drop point. It's got a full flat grind. It's not too thick. It does it all. <laughs> it's one of those do it all shapes. It's pointy enough to be quote unquote tactical, but it's got just a very useful shape. You've got the protection of that finger guard. Again, good for tactical stuff. You don't want your hand slipping forward. Good for survival stuff too, same reason. You, know, you don't want a mechanical injury or in a uh, survival scenario. Wire pocket clip, which is reversible, not fully deep carry. As you can see, there's a bit of, you know, butt sticking out right there. Mid-mounted lock back. This is also a US made knife. I forgot about that. I thought it was Taiwan for a second. Super, super nice. About 241 bucks, like I said, for this particular version. Now we have the Spyderco Leaf Jumper, which, takes the handle from the rock jumper knife, which itself had a Warncliffe style blade and puts Spyderco's kind of, you know, signature leaf shaped blade on it instead. Hence you have the leaf jumper. This is a Seki City Japanese made knife. The price is about $92. You've got, in a way, you can kind of think, I'm, I'm thinking of this on the fly. This may not actually track. This is almost, Feels kind of like a cross between the Pole Star and the Delica. A little bit. It's kind of it's it's above that three inch mark, which the Delica, of course, comes in just under. But there's something about it that kind of melds those two a little bit. Uh, VG10 steel, full flat grind. You can get it in plain edge or this fully serrated version right here. Spyderco is one of the uh, kind of few mainstream uh, knife enthusiast companies that still does anything with a fully serrated edge. So they're uh, maintaining that here. Gonna be great, of course, on coarser materials and fiber stuff like rope, especially. Gonna be fantastic for that. Handle length, there's plenty on this one as well. Again, slightly larger than average hands and they fit just fine. And I really like that they've maintained a feature that you've seen on stuff like the Pole Star and some of those similar knives where the handle itself goes all the way to the edge. You can get right behind that edge, no problem. A lot of control there, especially combined with the hump behind the opening hole that gives you that thumb ramp capability right there. Very, very nice. Four position pocket clip on this knife and mid-mounted back lock. So everything on this knife from the opening to the locking to the carry is completely ambidextrous. That's very, very nice indeed. There's the closed position if you're interested in how that looks. You've got the bi-directional FRN, so tons of texture due to those molded in peaks forward backwards, any which direction, solid, solid grip on this workhorse design. And if I didn't mention the price on this, can't remember if I did, about $92 right now. Next up, uh, a USA made knife. This is the new bullet knife from Remington for 2022. They just made it in time. This is the uh, Trail Guide Barlow Remington bullet. There you go. Uh, price on it about $69. $70 right about there. And if you were hoping like last year uh, that they would continue to use Great Eastern Cutlery to build the bullet knives, 
I think you can tell by that price, this is not a, uh, a GEC product. Uh, the quality is not bad, but it's definitely not kind of that top of the line GEC quality. Unfortunate as far as I'm concerned, but considerably more affordable for folks who like to collect things out there. You've got the kind of a typical Barlow shape really and a typical Barlow blade arrangement with the smaller pen blade and the larger clip point. Uh, the steel on this is a 440 stainless. I'm not sure exactly which grade, uh, but it does come with actual dyed bone handle scales here. At least they didn't uh, kind of go with a Delrin or plastic uh, went with the good stuff right there. And then of course the iconic bullet casing inlay right there. Really nicely done overall. But let's say you just like the looks of this knife. You're not a collector and you just want to use it. It's going to do quite well. The size of it is about a four finger knife for me just so most folks will have a fairly solid hold on this for pushing through some material if you need to make some heavier cuts. It is a slip joint, of course, so be careful with some of those heavier cuts. But it's just, I mean, it's a Barlow. It's a classic working person's knife. And that is definitely maintained here, just with a little bit of extra fancy. Now, another slip joint to talk about, we've got the tactile knife company, Bayar, spelled Bexar, but don't pronounce it that way or all the Texans in the comments will get angry at me. So don't come at me, bros. Blacked out version of the Bayar. Uh, Bayar, Bayar. Aspirin? Bayer, Bayer, Bayar, Bayer, 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 Bayer. K Bayer. K Bayer. We're, we're, this is really a tangent we got to get out of now. Grizzly. There's a grizzly situation we're in. Uh, you guys don't know how much I just have to grin and bear it with this guy over here. That wasn't as good. Uh, but it's true. It is true. <laughs> this version of the knife which is what we're going to call it from here on out, uh, has a black DLC coating and it still maintains the classic or the, the nice things that made the original version of this knife. So nice. Uh, black, uh, black blade, obviously, uh, two and seven eighths inch blade or thereabouts magna cut steel, very thin with a high flat grind. This is a slicey, slicey slice thing. It goes, whoosh, that's the sound a slicer makes. Did you know that? but you knew that. You yeah, knew. I work with you. Very nice. The titanium handles have kind of their signature diagonal milling on it and they're kept nice and slim as well. That is a very easy to carry knife, very easy carrying knife. I mean, just whispers away and yet you've got premium materials, USA workmanship overall. Price on it's about $2.99 right now. And as I guess I say, if I had one Kind of word of uh, word of advice there. You can get a little bit of scuffing on the blade. It looks like from the uh, the handle closing action. It looks like there might be a little bit going on right there. But other than that, man, I tell you, it feels really good. Uh, along with that, we've got also a new pocket slip to offer from Tactile. This is about fifty bucks, uh, and it is brown, and you can fit both the Bayar and a pen. Possibly, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're hoping you put a, a tactile pen in there, but any pen will, of course, pretty much work. Slide the knife in, and we do have a tactile pen right here. This is the medium of the three sizes. The uh, looks like the small would fit even better uh, in terms of the overall package size. But that thrown in your pocket is going to be very slim and very neat as well. Pretty cool little package. Very nice for organization. Uh, the pen, let's talk about Tactile Pen Company or Tactile Turn Pens, I should say. Uh, I own a couple, I think they are fantastically made. This is a new version of their Nexus, one of their side click pens. Uh, or actually this is a limited edition Nexus version of their side click pen. Sorry for the uh, confusion there. 149, this is the short size. There's also the mini and the standard which I don't think is called long. It's just the standard. Haha, <laughs> I had it right. The way this particular pen works is it's a standard click from the top, but the top clicker will not retract the blade. That's the little side click right there, as you can see. And this limited edition has a white Cerakoted body, some graphics on the pen. I believe it's also a Cerakote going on there. 
little purple accents there. It has a nice kind of cyber quality to it overall. And actually I just literally just noticed this. You've got tactile turn 2022 on the inside of the clip right there. Thomas is gonna have a wonderful time trying to get a shot of that for you folks. What's cool about the tactile pens is like I talked about the signature kind of diagonal milling on the knife, you get kind of a concentric ring milling pattern. At least I think it's concentric. I've never followed it around to see if it's actually a spiral before. Hmm. But it is a very fine milling texture going on. It gives you traction without it feeling shreddy. Like it's not gonna screw up your pockets too bad and it's not gonna slip out of your hands either. But it's really, it's just a party piece, kind of a signature move for their writing implements. And it's so well executed and equally as effective in actual utility as well. All right, next we have got a flipper. This is the American Blade Works Model 1. Uh, two versions of this we've got right now. We've got a brown canvas and this black canvas micarta handle. 199, made in the USA, 20 CV blade steel, about three and a quarter inches long on that blade. Drop point shape, which of course means it can do just about anything. Sharpening choil there at the back. Nice handle shape. It's got one of those nice neutral handle shapes, which means all different kinds of hand shapes and sizes should have no real problems with this grip. And check this out, nice touch. The inset liner lock there has kind of a copper anodizing job going on. Subtle little thing, but it's kind of nice to see it. Other nice touches, milled pocket clip, as you can see there with plenty of ramp there at the front, should make it fairly easy to actually use. And at the front, the pivot, which has the ABW logo, logo is actually keyed as well. So you only need one Torx bit to disassemble this knife if you needed to. Nice little touch. Always appreciate seeing stuff like that. Drop shut, eh, almost, but we do have ball bearings in the pivot and the flipper action just works extremely well. Next, we have the Curtis F3 custom flippers. Several versions of this right now, a few different blade shapes. Uh, and this is the medium. We've also got some large versions. This is the slicer drop point shape, which you folks know I love a drop point because as I've said a few times in this video, in fact, they do just about everything. Uh, price on these, $6.95 for all of them, no matter which size or blade shape or finish you're getting. Each of the handles is a little bit different. The medium has about a three and a quarter inch blade, and they're leaning into the more kind of tank-like vibes, more kind of overbuilt ruggedness rather than more like surgeon precision slicing. But you've got everybody's other favorite thing. We've seen it once on the tactile knife this episode, Magna Cut Blade Steel. So you've got a great deal of toughness to kind of back up the overbuilt chunky nature of this blade as well. Keeps things nice and strong. In addition to being stainless and having great edge retention, of course. The grind itself is a hollow grind. So again, keeps it thinner behind the actual cutting edge for a little bit more efficiency before flaring out to the thicker spine right there. Now, despite the kind of tankiness of the blade, the handles don't go overboard on this particular one, at least. It, it keeps things a little bit slimmer here, so easier to carry overall. Kind of nice. Uh, the blue color is good, works great against the gold pivot, and check that pivot out. Has kind of an X-shaped driver right there. Just looks really awesome, I gotta say. Really awesome looking pocket clip on this knife too, if you could take a look at that. Now we've got ball bearings in the pivot here and the flipper, but there's a few different ways to open these blades. You've got the milled pocket, milled cutout of the blade. It's not a cutout, but a scoop out. You can use that as a thumb opener and you can also do the reverse flick with it as well. So you've got some fidgety options for those of you folks who are looking for that. And you've got just frame lock stability and high performance steel if you're looking for a performance blade. Next up, we've got the Tor Knives Mullet Fixed Blade. It's a great name. Are they going for the hairstyle or the fish? I don't know. I think it's the party in the back. There is a party in the back, actually. We'll talk about the back of this knife first. That is a tungsten carbide breaker ball, which is press fit into the tang and then held in place side to side 
with the handle scales right there. So even though these handles are removable, wouldn't recommend rocking this knife uh, without the scales all the time because you don't wanna lose that little ball breaker now, do you? Speaking of those handles, this is ebony wood with kind of a mountain tread texture going on. Feels good. Before I even talk about the rest, I gotta say this might be my favorite Tor fixed blade yet. It is balanced, the blade points nicely, the handle feels great in the hand. Gosh, that's cool. A uh, four inch blade, CPM 154. You got a hint of recurve going on until you get to the drop pointy tip. A Little bit of a ramp at the top for thumb placement and thumb control. Sorry for stumbling over these like little simple words today. That's really, I, I, dude, dude, this is really nice. <laughs> as far as the thickness of the blade, looks to be about uh, 3 16 So this is definitely a little bit more of a brute than a slicer. I tend to be more of a, you know, enjoyer of the slicier knives in general, but this one is absolutely speaking to me. Flat grind on this knife, a little higher than the midway point. So it's gonna slice okay. It's in fact gonna do most of your daily stuff pretty well, unless you're like carving down boxes all day long where this might get a little bit wedgy for a task like that. If you're not doing that sort of thing all the time, I think this is gonna be pretty nice. Swedge along the spine, removes a little bit of drag there. Yeah, it just, it handles really, really nice. And it's still manipulatable enough to do fine stuff, you know, pinching up on the blade, which don't, don't do this at home type of thing. I can't recommend this type of hold, but I do it anyway myself. I like it. You always know, I think, when I really like a thing on this channel because I run out of things to say really quickly. I don't know how to describe why I like something all the time. But that's, that's just really good. The sheath is Kydex with kind of that faux leather appearance on the outside. Uh, Thomas, did this come with any belt hardware? I, can't I think remember. so. Thomas thinks it came with some belt attachments in the box, but if it doesn't, it'll also fit a tech lock. I did check that out. Speaking of Tor made fixed blades, remember the DPX Hest fixed blade that at one point was made by Rowan, the same folks who made make the SE knives? Well, this latest run of the Hest fixed blade is manufactured by Tor for Robert Young Pelton and D DPX. 150 for this knife, we've got D2 tool steel, just about as thick as the original. We're dealing with another kind of 3 16 of an inch thick blade right here. So because of that thickness, even though they've switched to D2 for this version rather than the 1095 of the uh, previous versions, which of course is a tougher steel than D2 is, because it's essentially so thick, you've still got toughness going on here, just not quite as much, but still it's a pretty good amount but the blade length itself is just over three inches. And it is, like I said, kind of overbuilt. So if you're looking for a compact fixed blade survival knife, this is a honestly a really good choice. Hikers, if you, you know, if you wanna keep things you know, light, but you're not really subscribing to ultralight necessarily, but just you know, kind of minimizing things where you can, uh, the weight of this with the sheath is about 6.7 ounces. So not ultralight, but certainly lighter than a lot of bigger fixed blades, but you've still got a degree of strength here that a lot of ultralight gear just doesn't have. Good to know. You've got the cutout in the spine, just like on the folders, which will work as a bottle opener. You've got things like the wire breaker choil here at the back, significant finger guard in front of that, which will keep your fingers from sliding forward. And then you've got that pry bar tip, really more like an actual, like, crooked pry bar type of thing, rather than the uh, the side to side thing, which you see sometimes. This one, you can actually hook the beak in and lever up this way, which is actually gonna give you more strength because you've got more steel this way to support the thing rather than bending something this way, which is kind of cool. One little note here, there is a little bit of a, a sharpened nubbin sticking out here right near the uh, choil. I did see that, that's gonna sharpen away with like the first session right there. Also will help things I'd rather they give you that than give you too much of a recurve on the, uh, on the edge through the factory sharpening process. A couple different colors on the blade coating are available. Helps keep the rust at bay, of course, since D2 is only semi-stainless. And then you've got removable micarta scales with a standard 
flathead bit. Some folks will appreciate that. It's easier to improvise as well if you need something on the fly. And there's also a little cavity inside for storing a little bit of extra gear too. Last but not least, we have the sheath. It is Kydex. There you go. Comes with a J style clip made out of some sort of plastic and will also fit a tech lock if you wanna swap things out. All right, I've got two things to end the video with. Two new O knives. We have the Rubato 2 and the Metal. Both of these spelled a little differently than they might sound. Rubato, R U B A T O, not Robato, and Metal, M E W T L E, like show me your metal, so to speak. Two really cool finger safe locking designs. Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the Metal, actually. Uh, price on this knife comes in at about $85. You got a three and a quarter inch drop point blade, C or 154 CM, not CPM 154. Nice versatile shape. Again, you folks know this, uh, this is a blade shape that appeals to me, even if you've only ever seen this video from us. Uh, swedge there on the spine, but not full length. You get a little bit of jimping, this kind of longer patch going on. And you may have seen something like this on the Kaiser Drop Bear recently. And that's very astute of an observation of you because actually uh, we're pretty positive, like 99.9% .9 positive that these knives are made by, by uh, Kaiser for O-Knife. It's got the same kind of action, really similar pocket clips in fact, and really similar actions on the lock. Button lock on this particular one, it's got that free floating action behind the ball bearings on the in the pivot right there that you would expect. Flips nicely, wrist flicks open and closed really nicely. It's kind of a three and a half finger grip for my hand size actually. This would be a great everyday carry option. Couple different two-tone G10 uh, things going on here. This is the orange and gray, although it's kind of a blue gray. We've also got a black base with a green outer layer of color for something a little bit more subtle if you'd rather go with that. Deep carry clip also completes this knife. It is reversible, which is great, as I always say, because even though the button lock itself is right hand biased, very easy to use, even if you're not left handed in your left hand. Uh, next up, the Rubato 2. See some more similarities, I think, with uh, the uh, drop bear in the handle construction here. $90 for this knife, sub three inch blade, 154 cm, high flat grind with your modified sheep's foot profile going on here. Nice, strong, stout feeling blade without having to go ultra thick. This is an appropriately width blade, I would say. And again, a nice full patch of jimping along the spine, very similar to the drop bear. And you can even see marked right here, the words, the letters AZO, which is AZO, which is Kaiser's in-house designer. So it makes sense that you'd see it on a, a knife that uh, was designed and made by Kaiser for O knife. Anyway, aluminum handles here, really cool shape, a little bit more kind of visual tension to it than the Drop Bear's handle. I really dig that. You can also get it uh, right now with a green canvas micarta handle. Deep carry clip, almost fully deep carry, I should say, and it is reversible and the crossbar lock, which means you've got that finger safe action. You've got great wrist flicking. Ball bearings in this pivot has action just like that excellent drop bear. Lacks the, uh, the extra spring positioning, the uh, user, end user adjustability that the drop bear does provide, but man, it doesn't need it. It's just so good right out of the gate. One quick note, it is the crossbar lock. Kaiser calls their version the, cr the clutch lock. And even though this is a Kaiser's version of it, uh, O-Knife is calling theirs the rail lock. Can't we all just get along and call it the crossbar lock? It doesn't matter. A rose by any other name would always smell as sweet as they say. Or as, and, and have thorns. I was like, as that one guy said way back. I don't care what you call it really at the end of the day, it feels fantastic. And it's built really well, especially at this price point, about 90 bucks, lot to love right here. All right, that's all I have for you this week, our last New Knives episode of 2022, which means the next one will be in 2023. And I'm not gonna say that see you next year thing joke, that's, that's cheap and played out. But see that, you in the future. That's true. 
See, now, now you've, because I, I was going to then make the joke later just to be silly after saying I didn't make it, but now you've taken it somewhere I else. I saw into the future. And I, don't. I knew that you were going to say that. Am I that predictable sometimes? Yes. I think we spend too much time around each other. That might be the case. Probably. But anyway, let me know what you thought of these knives down in the comments. If you want to get your hands on any of them, check out the links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. And don't forget, of course, while you're over there, we have our Knife Rewards program, which means that every time you buy one of these knives, you're going to be earning some free money to spend on a future purchase. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. See you next year.